I'm sorry, there's somebody recording. Um, you know, it, 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 it would give me great anxiety to leave the Bymore behind. I mean, I think the Bymore is so much a part of the show, so much a part of the comedy of the show. But what it does is it grounds our characters. It's really, it's really, Chuck is a guy who does go back to his, his Bymore life, you know, maybe less so right now in the show. Yeah, but it's still a part of it. It's still a part of it. You know, that, um, but um, yeah, maybe you know, certainly in the future, going down the road, the concept of a buy more or less super spy show, which I believe, I, I would love to think that you know that we're building for the year, but maybe he never makes it. That yeah, well, he's had that job. Yeah, I had that job. Would there ever be a buy more and wrong? There certainly could be a buy more room. Every, every once in a while, we, we try to figure out how we can do the buy more set in another country. I want to do a Coast of Rock and buy more so I could have, like, um, bring uh, Armand Asante back to the show. Mm -hmm. yeah. We could. We could. We'd have to rebuild the set. I think that Warner Brothers would come after. Yeah, whatever we do. I do have a question. What do you think about Sarah's sort of conflicted feelings for Chuck in that she seems to not want him to be a killer, although we know she has no problem dating killers in the past. Sure. And she sort of you know, was attracted to the innocence of Chuck, and it's sort of a part of the issue that, you know, she's sort of been creating this spy killer Chuck, and it's sort of her fault that he's going to be. She's the result, you know, she's the cause of his love. I think when you, when you say the word killer, I think when you refer to it, she's, she's, she's used to and is a spy, in some ways a soldier. So she's done, you know, she's done very serious and scary things within the world of spies. It's not like she's building a, you know, Jack the Ripper. You know, it's not, that's not exactly the same type of killing. So she, she knows, you know, she knows spies and she had a relationship with Bryce and she currently has a relationship with Shaw. But um, when it comes to Chuck, I think the, the, the change for her this season is that if we go back to the first season, the first episode of the season where Chuck said no to her on that train platform in Prague, essentially she had put herself out there in this huge way. She had decided that she was not willing to leave this life and to be a regular person for Chuck Bartkowski out in the world. And what had happened there is that he said no to her. When he said no to her, he had a really good legitimate reason to do it. He wanted to be a hero. He wanted to help the world. He wanted to use the intersect in his head to be a better person to build and to, and to, to change things. However, it's a gigantic no. And so Chuck, throughout this season, has been a moving target. It's like the guy she fell in love with in season one, the guy that she has these feelings for, Chuck Bartowski, a regular guy who wants to nerd her, he's a changing guy. And so in some ways, the moving target of Chuck Bartowski has been the big dramatic thing for her this season, for Sarah to kind of go like, is this the same guy that I fell in love with? And that's something that we've been tracking, and especially he's leading into the episodes we're going to run today, episode 13, as it really comes to a culmination here, is Chuck Bartowski, you know, you know, is she still in love with him? Is this still, is still the same guy? Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you had some really great guest stars in the show. So I do see, is there somebody out there who you guys are just dying to get it? Like, <laughs> oh, people are dying, are dying to have on the show? Yeah. Oh, I, I, there's there's tons of people in both like the comedy world and like the action world and the, you know, the cast of The Expendables. I mean, it's like, it, there's, there's, there's everybody from like 1980s action movies that I kind of grew up with and love, as well as like com just comedy people. So we were so excited to get them. Uh, we have Fred, Fred Willard coming to the show um, and Susie Kurtz, and they're just wonderful. And so I think that the show really does well by bringing people into, into it who have kind of like a, a background in action or a background in comedy. So that's been a. Um, I think for me, I, I would love to. There's somebody I was thinking about today. Mr. T? I would love Mr. T to on the show. Uh, yes, that'd be awesome. Um, uh, I, I, I was really pushing for William Shatner at one point this season. I mean, I'd be a huge Star Trek fan. Um, but there's other people. I apologize. I should have come up with a list of like, you know, just kind of interesting people. That, you know, uh, Peter Weller, or just like anybody from. I love anyone from the bu movie Buckaroo Banzai. I would just like to bring the entire cast back together and put them on the show. <laughs> Deep into, deep into the well. And um, within Chuck's life, Ellie is the one who's not sure that she ever going to find out. Well, let me put it this way. First, I'm not going to I can't say it because I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, but I, I also think that if Ellie were ever to find out about Chuck's, Chuck's spy life, that would be a huge development for our show. Because, like, you know, it's, it's such an important thing for Chuck to actually go back to his own life and to have this kind of, have someone he can talk to as just Chuck Bart has to be a regular guy. And um, uh, so it always gives me great anxiety to consider the idea of bringing Ellie into the spy world. And what does that mean to the show? Well, you managed to end up with everyone else in it. It's true. Well, but, 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 each time we've done it, 
I always have a panic attack. Yeah, and so so when it became when it was jo when it was Josh, you know, in episode nine this season, we brought Morgan into the show. Um, you know, we knew that was going to fundamentally change the show. What was so exciting about it is that we had this conceit, and actually Josh and I talked about it last season. Gomez and I was how neat it would be with the idea of like making go making Morgan kind of like the Alfred, the Chuck. You know, that everybody needs a spy assistant. Because you, because originally you would have thought they're awesome with them, but right. the way the way Josh picked it up and Morgan kind of like really helped out. Yeah, was no, it's wonderful. wonderful, and it's wonderful. And that, I mean, the, we've had so much fun this season. And going forward, I think you'll actually really enjoy that we have a new great spy team on the show, and that's uh, John Casey and Morgan Grimes. <laughs> and just, they're just wonderful together. They're funny, and the, and the, the, that Morgan always struck me as a character, like awesome in the spy world, the guy who. You can see, you know, the anxiety of this mm -hmm. kind of scary world, like, you know, really kind of, you know, messing with it. Whereas um, uh, Morgan Grimes, he's perfect. Right. You know, he's at the perfect psychology. You know, he's unflappable. You know, sometimes hapless, but, you know, he's kind of perfect. You know, if you're in real trouble. So I actually really thought you were going to bring Jeff and... Um, Jeff and Lester. Yeah, yeah. Lester into it. Yeah, you know, I will find out at some point. Never, ever. I know. <laughs> no, Vex the High would definitely warrant that, but no. <laughs> Only to spite Vex. <laughs> So the, um, the way Chuck accesses the intersect right now, he has to be calm and relaxed and focused on it. Right. And there was a storyline where there was a pill that would allow him to calm those fears. Are we going to have more devices or even the pill come back to try and find another way for Chuck to relax, maybe yoga or something? I like the idea of yoga, Chuck. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, in truth, the, Chuck's emotional state how he's working with the intersect, like each episode kind of like folds into like those two things fold together. Um, so with the Lot and all episode where Chuck to take the pill, we realize that that pill doesn't really work for Chuck because so much of like being a spy is knowing right from wrong, even though you're called upon to do scary and dangerous things. You know, Chuck taking that pill is a different person. And I think that was kind of a um, uh, um, a, uh, a big deal to realize that that wasn't going to work for him. But I think going forward, it's like he is getting better. You know, it's in, in, in we're seeing him go into more situations out in the spy world where he's less a fish out of water. He's still Chuck Hartowski. You know, one of the things about this, about the show is that we've actually been allowed to change the show as we go along, to make Chuck a better spy, to have him progress, to give him abilities. And I think that's what's neat about the show is that it's not season one, all over and over and over again. We're always deepening it and changing it, and um, uh, and um, uh, but hopefully it's still very much the same show, though, in the sense that it's the same tone of, you know. But, but the problem is that has to be consistent throughout the season. Because sometimes it's he has to be really calm and for like a quarter in a second. But then there have been other times when he's been panicked and scared for like Sarah or someone else. So right. there's like no consistency. Well that's it, that's Chuck Bartowski. He's not consistent. He's not a consistent spot. He's not, he's, not, he's, not, he's not James Bond or Jack Bond. You know, he doesn't have that ability to kind of control his emotions. So he might be, in, if he's in danger, he might be able to do what he needs to do. When Sarah's in danger, you know, it's, everything changes. When it's, I mean, if, it's, if Morgan's in danger, everything changes. So the point of the show is to have him deal with those different situations. Um, I know you can't give too much Um, uh, well, we have the return of Scott Bakula in episode of um, our last two episodes of the season, our two-hour season finale, and the episode before we'll have um, uh, will Scott return. And what's great about, about Scott is that it just speaks to the mythology of the show. So we really deep in the kind of experience, and it's also so neat to kind of see Zach and Scott, and Scott together, to see Chuck and Steve and Jay together, because, you know, they're just, it's a, it's a wonderful father-son story. And um, uh, it, the, the last two episodes of this season have, you know, amazing emotional moments that, you know, really are just, you know, it's epic. I just, you know, it's like we're always testing the balance of the show on an emotional level, going back to the, is it a comedy, is it a drama? We do everything. And that's what I love about it. It's like we get to do everything, and I don't leave anything, we don't leave anything on the table. And uh, those, the last episode will be enormous. Thank you, everyone.